So I'm Rachel Hutchison from Blackboard, and I'm thrilled to be here. I love Giving Tuesday because it really is for everyone. The barrier of entry is low. It's for companies. It's for people. It's for cities. It's for nonprofits. And today, we are going to talk about end of year giving just got earlier, kicking off the holiday season. So I'd love to have panelists come up as I introduce them very quickly. We have Jackie Nelson, who oversees a celebrity and entertainment relationships for the American Red Cross. And as recently as yesterday, she is also serving as the interim leader over humanitarian services marketing. So congratulations. We have Maura Ahrens Mealy, who is the founder of Women Online and The Mission List, as well as a consultant to the UN Foundation. Very cool. She helped Hillary Clinton log on to her first internet chat, launched Walmart's first blog, and during the pres 20 2004 presidential election was the director of internet marketing for the Democratic National Committee. So welcome. Margo Jacobs. Where's Margo? There you are. Margo Jacobs joined the UN, uh, United Nations Foundations in 2013 to guide the fundraising strategy and implementation for Nothing But Nets. As the senior campaign officer, um, she also spent six years as a consultant with CCS, which is a very large um, capital campaign and strategic consulting firm. And finally, we have Liz London from the Bridgespan Group. There's Liz, who joined uh, that organization in May of 2009 as the director of media and conferences. She's also a member of the group's philanthropy practice. And before being at Bridgespan, she was the senior vice president at Fenton Communications. So welcome to all of you. Thank you very much for being here. So what I'd like to do um, with this rally is literally just dive right in. And Maura, you have a microphone poised right in front of you. So why don't you start? So I'm going to ask each of the panelists to um, give us just a little bit of a case study of what they did around Giving Tuesday, and then after each one does a case study, we're going to jump into a round of questions. Hi, everyone. Um, so uh, I worked um, with a cohort of 13 nonprofits in the New York and New Jersey area who all participated in their first Giving Tuesday. We actually worked with Bridgespan and the Poses Family Foundation, and Steve Poses is here somewhere. There he is. Hi, Steve. Um, and you know, I, I really want to focus in this conversation on the difference between raising money online through email and raising money online through social media. I think that that is a huge topic of conversation that we as a community have to figure out. For fundraising nerds who go back a long way, email, email, email. And that was really what we taught this cohort because they were all pretty new to online fundraising. Um, and we had mixed results. We had some amazing results, but we had a lot of lessons learned. Um, so we worked with some organizations in the cohort, you know, who had a very small email list and, you know, did mostly high dollar fundraising. We worked with some large organizations, including 92nd Street Y, who had pretty sophisticated organizations. We worked with one organization, the National Center for Learning Disabilities, that had a huge mailing list and hadn't fundraised off it before. So all of this was about trying to figure out the levers that will get your community to give online and participate. Great. Wonderful. So Jackie, American Red Cross campaign, tell us a little bit about it. Um, well, we did, am I on? Yeah. OK. Um, we did a few things that um, really kind of came together, uh, really from various parts of our organization. And um, you know, I, I think that's one of the big learnings and takeaways we had this year was give it everything you've got. Take the content. It's not even just about producing new content. Take some of the great, great content you already have. You've got a day where you've got a really powerful channel. So we did a couple of things. One, um, we uh, did a lot of surprise and delight. And by, what, by that, what I mean is in the social media space, as people started to engage with us, or we started to see that someone had made a donation, perhaps through their tweet or their post, we would surprise them with very silly things like singing unicorns, like little images of singing unicorns, or pictures of kittens and puppies. And while it sounds a little bit wacky, it was really powerful because um, it made people feel good about what they were doing, and it generated conversation. And the second piece of that was we engaged the celebrity community to participate in that. They became a source of surprise and delight as well. They uh, each had chosen, we had a uh, um, library of wonderful, wonderful stories from people we had helped during disaster, or people who had lives had been saved through blood transfusion. The celebrities each chose one story that they were going to highlight that day. And they did that through um, a visual message. And so we were able to get all of that existing content out in a new channel and um, engage some new segments we hadn't reached before through celebrities' fan bases. 
But the real magic happened not so much when they shared the story, but when um, they heard back from their fans or they heard back from the Red Cross community and then the celebrity reacted again. And I'll mm -hmm. give you an example that I think yeah. is really powerful. Uh, Josh Dumal, um, who is adorable, for those of you who don't know him, he appears in many romantic comedies, um, is an excellent supporter of the Red Cross. And he chose a really powerful story about a college student who has sickle cell, who depends on blood transfusions to have a good quality of life. She experiences a lot of pain without them. He shared her story she then started to engage online, and this was all public, and um, you know, used it as kind of a rallying cry to get more people to give blood. So again, don't limit yourself just to money. Mm -hmm. um, and then Josh wrote back, kind of right back at you, Marquita. So she's feeling good. Everybody's watching that happen. You know, you've got a handful of people out there who are like, "Ooh, maybe they'll tweet back to me if I start talking about this." You know, mm -hmm. so that celebrity momentum and that mm -hmm. surprise and delight you know, singing unicorn kind of momentum really generated a lot of conversation. Yeah, that's neat too about how it's almost like a leveling factor, like here's the celebrity and here's this person and everybody can engage. And that's part of what I mean about that low barrier of entry. You yeah. really are all a part of it. It's Giving Tuesday is about you. It's about the community. It's about everything. We, we took that away actually as one of the biggest learnings from this year. Um, we we de-escalated the sort of fame of the celebrity. We made them seem very human. We brought mm -hmm. out their own kind of authentic, mm -hmm. you know, human personality instead of their um, their sort of celebrity personality. And we escalated the um, visibility and the sort of fame of our blood recipients and our blood donors and, mm -hmm. um, and our disaster survivors. And that's what really made it feel like a, a humanity kind of effort. Yeah. So Margo. Gift a net program. Tell us about that during the holiday season. Yeah, there was a great question in the last uh, rally about taking advantage of the consumerism of the, se of the season, and we fully did that this year. Our donors really like to take advantage of the simplicity of donating to Nothing But Nets. $10 sends a net and saves a life. That's our, that's our theme. Um, so we launched a uh, gift a net program where in lieu of giving uh, holiday presents this year, you could donate nets, and then we sent you a card with a little piece of net in it, and, uh, and some basic, uh, just information about what the net means. So if you're donating to someone who doesn't know about nothing but nets, they would learn about it. And we, uh, we really uh, were very pr excited about this program. We launched on Giving Tuesday, and the program raised about $100,000, which from our grassroots constituents, giving $10 at a time is pretty substantial. And uh, this year, I think we're going to take advantage of that again, but launch even earlier and, and kind of follow the retail model of, you know, getting the word out there early about the product and letting people know that this is something that they could gift that year. Um, so we're really excited to keep doing that. So Liz, as you reach for the microscope, the microphone, Bridgespan is a little bit different because you're an intermediary organization. So you can, can you talk a little bit about that and what you did for Giving Tuesday? Sure. Um, Bridgespan um, is an organization, although we are a 501c3 ourselves, it's our mission to help other organizations be more effective and achieve the greatest impact possible. So unlike some of my fellow panelists, we weren't raising money directly for ourselves. <coughs> Henry mentioned something that I want to keep in mind, which I think really drove what our activity was for Giving Tuesday, and that was this notion of creating a, a connected learning environment. So our activity was to, in the lead up to Giving Tuesday for eight weeks, create a blog and video and webinar series all focused on what we call adaptive philanthropy or in other words, getting constituency groups and philanthropists to think about their giving in new and innovative ways, adapting to a, a changing environment. What we did was we collected about 25 individuals who agreed to contribute to the series we kicked it off with a webinar, and we tied it all in directly to Giving Tuesday. Henry was on our first panel, and I can tell you one big learning and one big takeaway. There is a hunger for this kind of information. We had on our webinar the highest number of registrants ever for a webinar on St Stanford Social Innovation Review, which was our host organization. So obviously, there was, there was a real desire to get this information. And in addition to that, the information that we were able to collect by, from people signing up for a webinar was very useful for us. We've got contact people, people who've asked for additional information. Mm -hmm. 
The other thing that happened as a result of this is I feel like we were able to amplify the message of Giving Tuesday. By connecting all these individual blogs and conversations and generating a dialogue, we were able to share with a very broad constituency the ideas behind Giving Tuesday, and we were able to motivate other individuals to join, and some of them had never even heard of Giving Tuesday and had not connected the idea of how to have greater impact with your philanthropy to the notion of Giving Tuesday. Also, one of the things Henry mentioned, which I really liked, was talking about then how do you measure the impact of the activity? How do you measure the impact of Giving Tuesday? So what we did at the end of the eight weeks, which culminated with actually on Giving Tuesday, we waited till all the results came in. We co-authored a blog with Henry sharing the outcomes of Giving Tuesday with our collective audience. And I, we then went back and surveyed everybody who had registered for the webinar or who had asked for information to try to understand if we had had any impact in offering this survey. And I just want to share a few quick numbers with you. Um, we asked about 21 questions. I won't bore you with all of them, but what we found was 79% of the people who responded um, said that they shared the content with others. 69% said that they came across ideas that they had never seen before. This was the first time. Another 60% said that the series introduced them to new concepts. 56%, um, but this is what was really important to us, said that their interactions with this material made them think very differently about how they were giving, and it made them think made them be more thoughtful about how they were going to give in 2013 and 2014. And then last, 35% said that they were going to share the material with others and that they thought that what they had learned was going to help them influence others. And I want to just sort of sum up by saying that's very analogous to me and the way you think about how Giving Tuesday has happened, how the movement has grown. A lot of it is about how people have shared ideas with others, how people's yeah. behaviors have influenced others. Yeah, that's Absolutely. great. Did you have a well, I just did want to point out that I think it's great. Uh, giving Tuesday is a wonderful opportunity to start a dialogue about giving and a dialogue about philanthropy. And uh, that's another thing that we did at Nothing But Nets is we, had, we took advantage of the opportunity to call and thank our donors that had already contributed that year, mm -hmm. to call those that hadn't reached the threshold that they had met mm -hmm. last year, and to encourage them to consider that before year end. But it was just a great opportunity for our staff overall to have a one-on-one -on -one with our donors, to get to know them, and then for those donors to really hear from the people that are granting their funds down out into the field and are really there every day working with the, the funds that they've contributed. That's really important because what you're talking about is you wove Giving Tuesday into all these other things that you were doing. I like to say that Giving Tuesday is not magic. It's not like this thing that just exists over here on its own. Weaving it into your other strategies, lapsed donors, thanking donors. The San Diego Zoo did wonderful things on site with renewals, with all sorts of things to weave it all together. Well, so Maura? Yeah. I, I just wanted to say say two points to that. One is um, I want to thank everyone here because working with this cohort of 13 smaller nonprofits um, who really were new to this, you know, they were new to social media fundraising, they were new even to email fundraising, learning from all the big dogs, you know, um, and hearing this community not only prepared them for Giving Tuesday, but has prepared them to actually become full-fledged digital fundraising departments. And so I think that that's a really important point and that leaders in the community are such great teachers to smaller yeah. groups. And that was part of our role is we, we brought these nonprofits together, we brought experts from everyone from the Obama campaign's head of digital analytics to legendary online fundraising teams taught them. We created Giving Tuesday University on the Giving Tuesday site where our cohorts shared their learning, yeah. hoping, again, to reach the small guys who don't have that opportunity. And, and I think that that's a real responsibility yeah. we, as leaders in the community, have. You're building capacity for exactly. overall fundraising. So Jackie, do you have a comment? And then um, I want to ask you a question. Uh, I do have a comment. <laughs> Um, actually, a disagreement. I actually think it is magic, and I think, you and do. I, I do. I, I think it's both. Um, I disagree. I, and, I, and I think um, that that was one of the big takeaways we had from some of the things that we experimented with this year. I think there's a lot to be said for starting early and planning and preparing. Um, that lets you take all of the resources you have, which in, for most people in this room are going to be limited, and really figuring out how to align them behind mm -hmm. um, whatever your goals are, fundraising, engagement, whatever, um, and kind of building up a swell to that day where everyone then engages on this day. But I think one of our big learnings this year was 
that there is a kind of magic that happens that day. And we saw it with the celebrities mm -hmm. reacting. Mm -hmm. And we saw it in the way that communities started to let their guard down and realize that we're not necessarily competing with one another. And, um, and but I think the third thing was um, being present that day to really authentically engage with people. Um, you plan, plan, plan for this for months, and it's so easy when you get to that day to just go back to all of these messages you're hoping to get mm -hmm. out. And yet we saw some of the most powerful moments happened organically exactly. where we were just reacting to some really powerful stories or conversations. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things we did not expect at all is that the people who had been featured in our stories, um, mm -hmm. the disaster survivors and such, actually jumped on and started to participate in the social media conversation. And that ended up being one of our most powerful assets that day. Mm -hmm. And if we hadn't been kind of present and staffed mm -hmm. to react to that, we would have missed a huge opportunity. Yeah. That power of user generated content. So did anything else surprise you about the day? Uh, yes, there, there were a couple of things. I think- For um, the campaign overall? I, I, there were a couple of things. I think one, um, that it didn't cannibalize um, was a surprise. I think, too, um, the realization that we're not in competition, that if we have a little bit of faith um, in, in the process and sort of the power of Giving Tuesday, that all boats rise. It's not a zero-sum game. Mm -hmm. And then I, I would say that the third thing is that um, having the right metrics and measurement matters. Um, we kind of placed engagement and tone of the conversation over the fundraising goal, which is like a huge act of leap of faith, right? Mm -hmm. um, and yet it, it pays off. We saw good conversion with that. Um, so trusting that doing the right thing is actually gonna, getting caught doing the right thing is gonna work out. Yeah, okay. We have about five more minutes, so I wanna take, I know it's going really fast. <laughs> it's a rally, remember. A couple more questions. So Margo. Um, how does an organization stand out on Giving Tuesday? What would you advise? Yeah, I would definitely, uh, uh, I, I would comment that Giving Tuesday has really become another um, New Year's Eve where you have a lot of messages, there's a lot of traffic, there's a lot of noise out there, people are getting a lot in their inboxes, so whatever you can do to stand out is important. Matches are great. This year, um, what we're hoping to do is to launch our uh, gift net program much earlier with a special match on Giving Tuesday so that there's an even bigger result during that day. Um, anything that you can do, I think the United Methodist Church had a phenomenal match that they offered up. And, and going back to the collaboration thing, they matched gifts that came to any program that they support, including Nothing But Nats or others that they raise money for. So it was a nice, it was, again, not competition. It was let's work together to just get as much as we can. Um, to the people that need the help that they can. And then I think if you just uh, have a little fun with it, you know, it's, it's a fun day, it's the start of the holiday season, um, and people are really in the spirit to have a little fun. So Maura, speak to that from the small organization. How do they not get lost? Well, I think it's really challenging. I think the ones that didn't get lost did three things. One is that they did start early, and they asked often, and they asked right up till December 31st. I mean, the, this kind of integrated strategy worked really well, where they used multi-channel, so they used social, they used in-person, they used peer-to-peer, -peer, and email. The ones that were overly dependent on email just on Giving Tuesday completely got lost, because they had high unsubscribes, it's very, very challenging. The ones that started right before Thanksgiving really engaged their bases, used social media, everything that we're talking about here, and saw Giving Tuesday as a buildup and a really great day, but not kind of the capstone experience, really a highlight of this month, and kept going right to December 31st, they worked best. We had one organization that didn't meet their goal on Giving Tuesday. And then a week later, they came back and they said, you guys were amazing on Giving Tuesday, but we still didn't meet our goal. We have X left till December 31st. Come on, we can do it. Mm -hmm. And they did it. Yeah. And so it's really about managing email strain. I mean, if I had one lesson to share, it's that you know, I think Giving Tuesday is the time that social is going to raise money online and that that's really exciting and that it's maybe going to make us less dependent on email fundraising. And I saw that those organizations that were purely dependent on email did not have as good a day. So it's about integration, starting early, asking often right up till December 31st. So Liz, what specifically can intermediary organizations do? What advice do you have? Um, thanks for the question. It's really energizing to hear what people, the stories people are telling. I would say if you have the ability, as we do, to reach out to constituency organizations, our clients, member organizations. What surprised me was how easy it was, how open people were to participating. I mean, I couldn't believe it. The first year, you know, figured, okay, let me 
sort of reluctantly reach out to a few people, see what happens. And everybody said yes. So I would say use your platforms as an intermediary to help amplify the message, show that you're part of it, that you're active yourself, because I think that lends a certain credibility. And go wide with everybody you know. Use every platform you have. So do we have questions from the audience? Because there's one in the way back. I don't know if we're going to be able to hear you. Ah, there we go. Hi. Um, so as a social media uh, practitioner, um, one of the questions that I have is, you know, you mentioned making sure that you integrate in terms of your, um, you know, your donating platforms, using social media, and building uh, capacity was actually something you talked about earlier on. For small nonprofits, like the one that I work for, we don't necessarily understand that capacity. How do we actually do that? Uh, you know, is it is it a, a matching pool? Like, how how what are the the easiest ways to engage um, individual donors as well as businesses? Okay, so any quick advice? Yeah, well, I was just going to say, I mean, I think it's strength in your partners. If there's one theme I picked up this morning, it's that we work better when we work together. So we tried to start Giving Tuesday to try to bring resources together. I think we'll be seeing more of that. We talked about how in Baltimore people came together. If you're a small nonprofit, maybe you can all get together and hire a consultant who's a real expert on email fundraising. You can't afford it on your own, but you can bring in best practices. You can really use the community. And I think that there is strength in numbers on Giving Tuesday. I would add to that. I would add to that. Use your one grassroots card. Like if you're gonna, if there's one day in the year where you're gonna mobilize your grassroots community, this is the day to do it, particularly if you're small and you wanna stand out. Um, I probably sound like such a jerk saying this when I'm representing the Red Cross, but um, <laughs> but just bear in mind that we had we had really one or two staff that day. Everyone else that was engaging in our conversation were volunteers, corporate partners, and we had just really invested a lot of time up front in making sure that they were ready to be present that day and respond. And the grassroots piece of it is really the piece that makes the impact, not the sort of official accounts. Yeah. Well, great. Thank you so much to our panelists. If you have other questions, I'm sure they'll be around, so catch them. <laughs>